Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we are talking about muscle and leanness and how muscle affects leanness. You all know that I'm a big advocate for building muscle for all of the incredible benefits. It literally is the anti-aging antidote. It is so good for your body, but it also can affect leanness. And I want to discuss how. So this is these are the questions we're going to answer today. Number one, does strength training burn fat? Number two, does having more muscle make you leaner? Number three, does muscle affect hormones? Number four, how does strength training play a role when you're in a calorie deficit? So let's just go right into question number one. Does strength training burn fat? Short answer, not really. <laughs> let's talk about this. It's a little more nuanced. So strength training plays a role in promoting leanness, but not really through the calories burned or the fat burned during the workout itself. In fact, strength training is often not marketed as a fat loss tool because it doesn't burn very many calories. But what many don't understand is that strength training has a cellular effect that is important for fat loss or for maintenance. When performed close to failure, strength training depletes your glycogen stores in your muscles. This depletion is key because it primes the muscles to absorb more glucose from subsequent meals, effectively effectively creating like a sponge-like effect. As a result, more of the carbohydrates consumed post-workout are directed into the muscle tissue for glycogen replenishment rather than being stored as fat. So when you eat, more of the sugar from your food is stored in your muscles rather than as fat. This process enhances insulin sensitivity and glucose regulation, contributing to a leaner physique over time. Of course, we also know that strength training stimulates muscle protein synthesis, leading to muscle growth and muscle preservation. So this increase in lean muscle mass has a cascading effect on metabolism and body composition and overall leanness. So you may say, oh yeah, I, I knew that. I knew that having more muscle helps with leanness because it increases your resting metabolic rate and makes you burn more calories at rest. And this is true to some extent, but I think it's been kind of overblown by the media. So muscle tissue is more metabolically active than fat tissue, but not to the degree often claimed by popular media. Muscle does burn more calories at rest than fat tissue, but the difference is relatively small. So muscle, one pound of muscle burns about six to 10 calories per day compared to one pound of fat burns about two calories per day. So that increase in muscle mass does have a positive effect on your resting metabolic rate, but it's really not as dramatic as commonly believed. So an example of this in practice is a 150-pound person with 20% body fat might only burn 60 to 120 calories more per day than someone who is the same weight but has 30% body fat. So if two people are the same weight, one person has more muscle, one person has more fat, the person with more muscle might burn, in this case, you know, 60 to 100 calories or 120 calories more per day. But more importantly than the slight increase in resting metabolism is that having more muscle improves your overall metabolic flexibility or your body's ability to switch between using carbohydrates and fat for fuel. This flexibility contributes to better energy utilization and better fat metabolism. So the active strength training doesn't burn a lot of fat or a lot of calories, but it does help improve glucose regulation, which has an effect on how your body uses the food that you eat and uses fat on your body for fuel. So to answer the question succinctly, does strength training burn fat? Likely not much, but it does affect metabolic processes that improve your ability to use fat and store less of it. Question number two, does having more muscle make you leaner? As I just touched on, the active strength training will empty those glycogen stores in the existing muscle tissue that you have. And over time, as you build more muscle tissue, the available sites for glycogen increase, which creates a compounding effect. So the very first time you strength train close to failure, you empty the glycogen stores in the muscle tissue that you already have. And this means your body has now more storage sites for the carbs in your food and less of your food gets stored as fat the next time you eat but that strength training session is also contributing to adding more muscle tissue. So over time, as you gain more lean mass, you have more available storage sites for glucose. This has a snowballing effect and is one reason why having more muscle can contribute to maintaining a leaner body. To use an analogy, it's like trying to park your car downtown with limited parking garages. We want to limit street parking, which the street parking in this is your fat mass, and we want the cars to park in the garage. But the garage space is limited, so cars that 
can't fit in the parking garage now have to park on the street. And we need some cars to come out so that new cars can come in. But if you construct more parking garages, you now have more space for cars overall. So your muscles are the same way. You can empty those glycogen stores with regular strength training close to failure, and then you can also construct new muscle tissue so there's more storage sites overall. So having more muscle can contribute to leanness, but remember that the amount of calories that you are consuming is important. If you are in a calorie surplus, no matter how much muscle mass you have, you can still gain fat mass. So that's really important to know that yes, it does contribute, but it is not the whole picture and how you're eating is very crucial if your goal is fat loss or if your goal is fat maintenance. Question number three, how does muscle affect hormones? So we'll touch on kind of three types of hormones. So we'll touch on hunger hormones, stress hormones, and metabolic hormones. Of course, there's more, but that's this what we'll keep it at today. So hunger hormones, ghrelin or the hunger hormone is affected acutely by exercise. So one single bout of resistance exercise may significantly reduce ghrelin. Studies show that these effects might not be long-term, like it's not going to reduce your ghrelin overall, but it may help you drive behavior around food and exercise. So maybe planning to eat right after you've trained where your hunger hormones are more or less regulated. You might not have this super high spike in ghrelin making you super hungry. So maybe that means you can eat an appropriate amount to fuel your body without overeating. Strength training might also have an effect on leptin, which signals to your body that you're full. It is produced primarily by fat cells, leptin is, and greater levels of leptin tell your body that you're full. Like you can be insulin resistant, you can also be leptin resistant. And I want to bring on a guest to talk about this more in detail because I think this is really interesting. But excess body fat may increase leptin, making your body less responsive to it. This makes fat loss difficult because understanding when you're full is now harder because your body's less uh, sensitive to leptin. A 2019 study in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that 12 weeks of resistance training decrease leptin levels in overweight men. This might seem counterintuitive, right? We want higher leptin levels because higher leptin levels mean that you uh, know when you're full. But this, this study said that strength training decreased leptin levels. So isn't that counterintuitive? Don't we want the leptin levels to be higher? This might seem counterintuitive, but it actually helped restore leptin sensitivity in this population, which improved long-term appetite regulation. So again, it might mean that they had too much leptin and their bodies were not sensitive to the leptin. So those are hunger hormones and how strength training can have a positive effect on hunger hormones. Another effect that uh, strength training has is on stress hormones. So cortisol, which we've talked about on the podcast before, everyone's heard about it. It's the stress hormone or a stress hormone, and it plays a crucial role in our body's stress response and acute exercise. So while you're exercising, you'll see an increase in cortisol and this is normal and can even be beneficial, but chronic elevation of cortisol is when the problems happen. A 2020 meta-analysis in sports medicine found that regular resistance training can lead to lower resting cortisol levels over time. So this means that your body gets better at handling stress, which has multiple benefits. As it relates to leanness, you might be able to recover better and exercise with more intensity or duration when your overall stress levels are lower. Lower levels of cortisol are also correlated with lower visceral fat, so the fat that's in your belly, kind of around your organs, and better retention of muscle mass. So not only can you handle more exercise stress and recover better, but you'll have less fat mass and more muscle when resting cortisol levels are lower. And then the final hormone that we'll discuss is a metabolic hormone, insulin. Resistance training can significantly improve insulin sensitivity. I've talked about this so many times and it has such an incredible impact on your body. Strength training has been shown to significantly improve insulin sensitivity, which plays a crucial role in maintaining leanness. Strength training increases muscle mass, which is a primary site for glucose uptake and storage, as I talked about earlier. 
And when there's less glucose in the bloodstream because it has places to be stored, there is a corresponding decrease in insulin. With lower insulin levels overall, your cells become more sensitive to insulin. This positively affects body composition since your body can more easily utilize the glucose and fatty acids as fuel, which reduces the likelihood of excess glucose being stored as fat. So that's how hormones are affected by strength training. Just to sum all that up, it's good. (laughs) You want to strength train and you will see a positive effect hormonally from strength training, which can kind of indirectly affect leanness. Question four, how does strength training play a role when you're in a calorie deficit? So if leanness is your goal, being in a slight calorie deficit is important if fat loss is your goal. But when in a calorie deficit, muscle loss will also happen unless you are strength training. For for in one study that I pulled and read, for every 8 to 10% of weight loss, if someone's not strength training, muscle loss increases by 2 to 10%. So you're in you're reducing your weight overall, but that's coming from both fat and muscle, which is not what we want. In this study that I'll link in the show notes, participants who maintained muscle mass while losing weight saw more fat loss and had better improvements in insulin sensitivity compared to those who lost both fat and muscle. So it is important to strength train while you are in a calorie deficit, hopefully to build muscle, if not at least maintain muscle. And again, we do that in Evlo by taking each set close to failure in 30 reps or less, working each muscle group, you know, through two, one to two times a week on non-consecutive days and recovering. So that is how muscle affects leanness. In short, strength training and having more muscle isn't going to magically transform your body and it's not going to be a fast track, but slowly starting to put more muscle on your body will have a positive effect on leanness overall, especially if you're also pairing that with proper nutrition. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We will see you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now.